Good morning, Rivermont. It's Pastor Brett with today's devotional. We're in a series on the Westminster Shorter Catechism, and today we come to question number 38, which asks, What benefits do believers receive from Christ at the resurrection? And the answer is that at the resurrection, believers being raised up in glory shall be openly acknowledged and acquitted in the day of judgment and made perfectly blessed in the full enjoying of God to all eternity. Now, there is no more important question for the Christian to answer than that of the resurrection. For as Paul states in 1 Corinthians 15, that if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, which means that he will raise us up as well on the last day. Well, in what sense will we be raised up? Well, at the resurrection, we will be raised up in glory. For those who previously died, their bodies will be raised up and formed into a glorified body that will not be subject to decay ever again. That which was perishable will be raised up imperishable. And what's more, these glorified bodies will be reunited with their souls. Now for those who are still alive when Christ returns, they shall be changed in an instant. Their bodies will be glorified at the very sight of Christ, much like Enoch and Elijah's bodies were glorified when they were taken to heaven without seeing death. But not only will we be raised up in glory, but at the resurrection we shall be openly acknowledged and acquitted in the day of judgment. Now, the Bible speaks clearly that a day of judgment is coming when every man, woman, and child will be judged for their belief and their life. For those who have looked to Christ for their justification, they will be openly acknowledged and acquitted. Uh, these are legal terms, of course, used in a court of law. To be openly acknowledged is for Jesus to declare to God the Father, the angels, and all of heaven publicly that we belong to Him. It is Jesus' public acknowledgement that we belong to the Father as His adopted son or daughter. We read in Matthew 10.32, So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. And because we have been publicly acknowledged as belonging to Christ, because we have his righteous record as our defense, we are acquitted of the guilt of our sin. We have been justified by Christ and declared not guilty. Paul says in Romans 8.1, There is therefore now no condemnation, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now, that's not to say that our justification through faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice is not really real until the day of judgment, because of course it is. The difference is that it is not publicly declared or openly acknowledged until the resurrection. The fact that we've been given the Holy Spirit, as, as Paul says, as a guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it is proof. Think of it in terms of a minor who stands ready to receive his father's inheritance when he turns 18. Well, that inheritance belongs to him now as a minor, but he can only fully enjoy it when he turns 18 and it's official. Well, then finally, at the resurrection, believers will be made perfectly blessed in the full presence of Christ to enjoy him for all eternity. This is our greatest joy, because our greatest and most chief end will be fully and finally realized. For we shall glorify God and enjoy Him forever. We will enjoy the comfort and joy of His presence with us. We will not be like our first parents who hid from Him and one another in our sin, but we will delight to be in His presence. The psalmist writes in Psalm 1611, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We will not just enjoy His presence, but we will enjoy all of the pleasures God has made in the right way for all eternity. There will be no more overeating food or overindulging technology. It will all be enjoyed in a God-glorifying way. What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, 
what God has prepared for those who love him. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the resurrection, that it is real and that we shall be raised even as Christ was raised, raised up into glory to possess glorified bodies reunited with our souls that we might forever glorify and enjoy you. We pray that you would come soon, Lord Jesus, and make this a reality for us. In Christ's name, amen.